Ya, sebelum kita mulai acara kami malam ini, perkenalkan uh, mungkin kita bisa menyambut dulu ketiga speaker kita yang telah hadir. Ada Mbak Ram dari dari Ekologi. Ya. Bisa kasih tangan. Kemudian speaker kami ya, semoga kita yang kedua ada Bapak Adiatma Gunawan Kita yang kedelapan Dan juga speaker kita yang ketiga ada Pak Jonathan Kita yang kedua ke ketiga sebagian kami Dan juga kita juga sudah kedatangan ketiga panelis yang sudah ada Ibu Gris Tahir dari Bini Lokal Bapak Donald And also welcome to Miss uh, Elian, yeah, from Shimizu. Yeah, um, kita juga acaranya akan dipandu oleh moderator kita malam hari ini ada Mas Ray Mahatma dari Startup Business, ya mas. Okay. Yeah, sedikit uh, sedikit saya alihkan ke Mas Ray. Semoga saya berharap semoga event kali ini memberikan insight insight baru mengenai e-commerce dan juga. Um, dunia kesehatan di Indonesia dan juga semoga uh, kita cipta diskusi yang fruitful dan juga aktif dan uh, para speaker dan juga para hari ini semuanya oke, okay, saya ajak ke Mas Rinsa langsung selamat malam, kenalkan uh, nama saya Rey saya disini sebagai moderator alias apa ya, tukang penggembira kalau pada bosen Jadi saya mau duduk dikit kalau udah pada diam gitu ya Nah, uh, malam ini kita bahasanya mix Ada beberapa bahasa Inggris I think you cannot speak Indonesia, right? So, so we try to talk in English And one of the unique side about healthcare industry is The founders usually come from that industry So, whether it's doctors or uh, Someone who works in medical, medical center or Or maybe his family have some background in medical. And when I ask, when I usually ask them, why you why you create this kind of startups? Usually they say that we want to help many people who is sick or need um, drugs or something. So it's it's one of the unique side of the uh, medical startups. And the other thing is in Indonesia we have a lot of uh, rumah sakit. We have a lot of rumah sakit. Jadi Uh, if you talk about technology startups, usually they, they will say in Indonesia we don't have uh, the the headquarter of Amazon, Cisco, Facebook. So you it's hard to create a tech startups that is not profitable in Indonesia. Tapi kalau kalau kita bikin tech startups di US yang teknologi banget, itu kan bisa di kalau nggak profitable bisa diakuisisi sama Facebook, Cisco, Microsoft di US. Di Indonesia, in Indonesia you you cannot Do teknologi startups dengan berharap di akuisisi Facebook karena nggak ada kantor pusatnya. Nah di Indonesia kalau membangun health startups itu kantor pusatnya rumah sakit banyak. We have a lot of uh, hospital here that maybe they can acquire you maybe. So uh, today we have also three panelists. Uh, maybe you can uh, give a short speech uh, one or two minutes about who you are, what you do, and relationship with the medical startups. Okay, since I am the closest to the mic, I guess I get to start first. Um, my name is Donald Biharja. Uh, I work for Convergence Venture. Uh, we are VC. Uh, we are only eight months old, uh, but uh, we have already made our sixth investment so far. Um, so uh, it's a very fast moving world in, in Indonesia on the tech startup side. Um, uh, my my role over here is because uh, I'm actually uh, looking for a tech startup. Uh, sorry, looking for specifically a medical health tech startup. Uh, so we've been doing um, looking at the uh, field for the last six months. Uh, it's a it's a difficult field. I have to admit, there's so many choices, so many good people, uh, and a difficult. Because uh, difficult to grow, yeah. it is it is difficult, difficult to, to grow. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of opportunity. Just can't figure out how to decide yet. Yeah. Um, uh, and suddenly there's a whole lot of other, lot of things. But 
those of you who are in the medical uh, tech startup, it is a great field. It, it has a lot of reward, especially if you look more than beyond how to make the next, uh, um, to make you uh, Mark Zuckerberg, when, uh, as opposed to uh, you do this for, for the love to call it. Okay. So, um, hope to hear from you guys and hope to see what, uh, what, uh, um, what we have accomplished so far. Um, so, uh, thank you. So, uh, my name is Ellie. I'm actually coming from Korea, but I've been living in Indonesia for three years. Uh, I work for sukamar.com, which is an online grocery website, uh, a bit far from the healthcare. But I'm in charge of the B2B market, uh, which is I handle all of the corporate customers. Uh, that's why I come to join the healthcare event here today uh, to see and also hear about what you guys think of the health, uh, healthcare commerce and also see what I can give you guys input as one of the most experienced, probably, B2B commerce person here. Not many um, websites do the B2B market. Uh, so let's see what we can uh, find out. Hi, my name is uh, Grace Tahir. Uh, I'm from Jakarta. Uh, anyway, my experience actually I've been in the healthcare business for over 15 years. I started at the Silicon Group. Uh, I also worked in Singapore for Parkway Group, and now I'm at the healthcare group as well. Uh, just recently, uh, my husband was there, Ronald and I. We launched Bluelocker.com, which is basically uh, the e-health side of it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, our purpose today is to learn from each other. So there will be three presenters. Um, they, they, after they present, they will ask uh, questions to the panelists, and you can ask questions to to the presenters or to panelists. Yeah. Jadi kita belajar satu sama lain. Gitu. Karena ini agak jarang banget sebenarnya meet up healthcare itu jarang banget. Um, saya udah nggak nggak ingat sebelumnya kok pernah ada, kayaknya nggak pernah ada sebelumnya gitu. So this is a great opportunity to learn. Uh, the first presenters, uh, Ram Dhani from Medicalogy. Are you ready? Uh, 
we, give, we, help, uh, we help also the brand to wider the branding and marketing, not only by offline being a salesman, but also by um, uh, online reach, which you can reach more people and wider. And also, we can help uh, the company to build rep reputation and also um, the product itself. We give them re regular report, but um, do, do people love your product? Something like that. So the manager of the company uh, can decide what they want to do about their product, things like that. This is all for, all, also for merchant. We give the knowledge thing fee. So if you want to put your product, just uh, discuss with us and we, we, we decide um, what kind of uh, model you want to use and you can uh, put your product. We give them a uh, best display product as they can and then uh, respond. And also we, we, we help the, the company to um, uh, communicate with the customer. I mean, if the customer want to uh, service their product or they want to ask about the guarantee or the calibration, we can help to um, like uh, um, in the communication uh, channel from, uh, from the customer to the company. This is how to do it, so you can ask us later. Um, this is our contact. That's all. Um, actually, I have sent the question to Amy uh, last day, so I'll um, then look for it first. Mm -hmm. I remember one question is uh, how to uh, how to do uh, a so social media marketing for B two B B two B commerce. So, uh, what's more, uh, how how to do a great of that uh, social media uh, communication uh, for B two B commerce. From my experience for the B2B, it is still the best way to reach the customers directly, uh, either by the direct sales people. Uh, so currently I manage uh, a big group of sales people to actually acquire the customers. Because for the B2B, uh, you need to have a personal relationship with the company. So I think it, it is still the most effective to have an actual sales force. Uh, if not, the actual uh, physical flyer or the direct mail is still the traditional way, uh, but still uh, the most uh, effective way uh, to do the B2B marketing. Uh, I believe you can still attract the people by Google SEM or maybe the Facebook ads, uh, but that's very uh, one-time uh, one time attention. And if you can get the attention from the customers by doing the online uh, advertising, but for the B2B customer, you still need to give them a very good relationship with the direct sales person or the relationship. Uh, so my recommendation is to build a good team to actually handle those accounts, like account manager. What we do now is like uh, we use online to uh, catch the customer and after that we follow up the uh, online. Exactly. Uh, then you're on the right track. Uh, but make sure you have a solid team to constantly follow up and not lose the track of the customer. actually different level of B, right? There's a, uh, uh, B is included all the way from small medium enterprise, all the way to the big one. Um, definitely the big one, like the, uh, the medium and above, uh, that they, that's, you, you will remember their names and they definitely need handling it. But the small clinics, uh, uh, the small clinics especially, how, how do you think, uh, is there any way to reach them through uh, social media? Yeah. Or, or, or this, 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 for you, maybe this is the, uh, the home industry that maybe buying things from. Very good. So, so, so the, the one that is, um, I believe, the small medium enterprise on the, the smaller side is 500,000. And if you go to the, to the um, home industry, that's 53 million. So that's a, it's a big. Thing to actually uh, do it with the right calling. Uh, 
I guess it depends on which market you will target first. Uh, from my strategy, it is better to target from the top to down. Right. But then it depends on the company. I guess it depends also on the industry, right? Because if in the healthcare, if there are so many small uh, clinics, and that's the biggest market share, then we need to yeah consider about how to target those. I guess if I were you, yeah, maybe I would go for. I would still have to use the direct sales force to reach one by one. I have a question. I mean, like, uh, itu tadi anda bilang medical equipment ya. Itu betul adalah uh, what kind of medical equipment are you selling? Are you selling like big medical equipment or like everyday use for uh, regular, you know, people who do not know so much about uh, medical? Oh, uh, basically, we want the medical uh, the medical device into to um, home healthcare. So uh, the, the thing that is uh, normal user people can use it and um, medical device, I mean uh, the thing that only medical professional can use it. So we also use, uh, uh, we also sell uh, instrument or uh, the SD, everything, uh, but we do want. Uh, I guess this, this, I'll ask too, which one is better? Um, it's sempitin produknya, banyakin customer-nya, atau banyak I think this is your business, so you have to kind of consider that yourself. But uh, I guess my own experience is this: uh, when you buy medical equipment uh, as a hospital, when I buy medical equipment, I usually go straight to the main distributor. But when I buy an MRI, which costs like one million dollars, uh, it would be impossible for me to go through a website. You know what I mean? I probably have to go through the actual distributor. So uh, you. Your, your key marketing action will be to market to the doctors themselves. Because the doctors will tell me as the management, hey, you have to buy this uh, surgical equipment, you have to buy this USG, this brand, specifically this type. So you have to do the marketing for the, for, to the doctors themselves. So that will help you to sell you the, uh, the, uh, the bigger part of the uh, medical equipment that we're talking about just now. But for the uh, customer, you mean, yeah. So I'm looking at one of the B2B side. Uh, I used to do uh, well, uh, uh, game card things for gaming, right? Um, now everybody kind of know uh, what, I, well, I'm hoping that everybody will know what Indoor Walk is, right? But once upon a time, our name has, does, does not exist. So for the longest time, we do B2B marketing, we recruit salesmen, we, we recruit one man, we recruit uh, side street vendor to sell. Um, the best way for that one is uh, city by city canvassing. You send an entire team, you go in there. And if you're going after the clinics, maybe they, you want to sell them like blood pressure, uh, but, um, not, not the expensive one, but the, the one a small clinic would buy, your best bet is to send some people down, I think, yeah, and, and um, just go around and, uh, and hit every single one, like one or two weeks, and then uh, come back and Use the website as an online brochure so that uh, when, they're, when they need to find more information, it's there. Uh, but uh, you need to, they need to see you face to face, they need to know that you are really there for them. because their buying behavior or what kind of information they need, uh, everything is different. Price point is also different. Say you say, uh, sell the uh, same items to both B2B and B2C, uh, you might want to offer more discounts to the B2B customers because they buy more uh, larger quantities. Yes. So you need to eventually uh, split the website. Uh, and uh, usually for the B2B side, you don't uh, let everyone uh, access. Uh, usually it's by the yeah, private login. Uh, so once they go through your sales agents, then uh, better consider giving them the login access. Once they log in, they see the different price points, uh, different products, different information compared to the B2C uh, website. Yeah. 
Definitely. Um, internet is about uh, customized experience. It's selling one-to-one -to, -one to the masses, right? Um, and that's by, by customizing the, the, the interface. Um, we definitely did when, when I was doing uh, my game card sales. Um, uh, way back 10 years ago, there are a multi-billion dollar company that specialize in uh, automatically uh, designing your website to be more one-to-one. -one. Yeah. So uh, that should not even be a question. It's, it, it has the look and uh, feel has to be different or has to be customized to individual person buying. Uh, thank God you have only two, but uh, if you there's one person or uh, one B two B client is a clinic, the other one is a reseller of the product, then, uh, then you need to, to tailor their individual experience so that you can really don't don't let them be confused. You have to think through their, the customer journey, uh, individual customer journey. You have to be uh, wear your customer's shoe and look at what their experience in your website looks like. And uh, at any given moment, if you can isolate one to the other, you know the clinic has to go this direction. Uh, maybe uh, more information, and the other one is more pricing. Then you, you do it. From what we do now is, uh, for example, they see the product, and then they make a call usually. And then um, we will ask them uh, who you are, like, are you a distributor of a hospital? Then we'll give them like a different price, something like that. Yeah, yeah but uh, more than price, you have to figure out what, what they are looking for. How to get, because sometimes you, they, they get you a place before they want to buy, when they're researching. And that's as good a time as any to get, to get them. So you need to, to figure out what's their pain point is and solve that, and then uh, sell. Uh, can you give an example what kind of website that have uh, that split the website from B2B and B2C so that you can uh, do the best mark of the interface? Our office do that, but our office already already closed, right? Actually, Sukhavar Dakar, uh, already has the two websites. Right, uh, but the other one, which is the, for the B2B, is not uh, popular. We never do a marketing for it because we only give it to our uh, private uh, B2B customers. That's why it's not uh, well known as much as the B2C one. So sukamar.com, if you log into, if you just go to sukamar.com, that's for uh, B2C individual customers. If you go to office.sukamar.com, then it's for the B2B customers, which is, which is a special login. Um, I believe also the most popular B2B in US is Staples. That one also has the uh, corporate accounts, which uh, if you select certain quantities, uh, it gives you more discounts, which you don't get as a B2C customer. Staples. 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 Also, it's split into two. So, BuildOver.com, which is basically a news hub portal, it's for the you know the mass of public in Bahasa Indonesia. And an investment just got uh, last week or two weeks ago from RingMD in Singapore. That's going to be a different business, a different website as well. But the challenge is this: you have well, two websites that you have to work on, so you get two you know two you know double well almost all the resources. You have double the effort as well to publish both at the same time. So that's going to be a challenge you have to think about. Where are you right now? You know, if I Mr. Jess, I would say that you have to choose one and focus on that, emphasis on that, and just do your best. So, Rick, uh, Peter, and Rick, I mean, it's actually two different. Two different services. We are offering two different experiences and services. <coughs> okay, next. Um, we, we actually uh, have a uh, Will like uh, someday we will change how people buy medical device. If now they have to go like pasar pramuka or uh, using salesman, what if someday they, they use more convenient uh, way to buy medical device? Something like we uh, we use a superstore or a pop up store for the medical device. So uh, how do you see that for Indonesia market? Something like say to but for so I just want to clarify, so you, you're thinking of making this offline? 
and the off offline of medical equipment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, uh, just my, my throat. <laughs> Uh, off offline store, something like that. Permanent or not? Permanent. Guardian, sanctuary, they already sell like those things, right? So, what distinguishes you from them? Uh, the, the idea is like this I mean, this is uh, a plan. Um, like, a um, long time ago, you, you better uh, go to Pamuka, for example, or you have to wait for the salesman to bring the brochure. Why don't you just, like, when you go to the mall and uh, oh, I want to buy this, like, oh, there's a store, you can go there. If you if you cannot buy it from online, then you can see the the shop itself and you can like. I guess uh, that's uh, that's what uh, that was talking about just now, right? Uh, if I'm a hospital, for example, it's actually me trying to tell people, please don't contact me. They always tell me, hey, please buy my stuff, buy my stuff. No one, like, please don't come. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. You know what I mean? But even to a regular person like me, as Grace, a person at hospital, uh, I would just go to Guardian or Century. I don't go to Pramuk. I don't even know what Pramuk is. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, you know, I already have that. If I want to buy it under pressure, I would just go to Essential, but I won't have that as well. Mm -hmm. So I think this might not be the best idea to have an offline of medical logic down the road. That's my opinion. Well, um, uh, number one, I, I, uh, uh, I think uh, in Indonesia, um, a pop-up offline. Pop-up meetings, uh, you, uh, one of those times when the mall decided to, to allow you to have uh, some floor space in the middle and you pay whatever it is that you, an island, yeah, uh, for a week and yeah. you leave, you go to another mall. Um, it's all about budget. How much money you got, right? Um, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to come up with uh, the, it, it should be considered a marketing budget. And you need, and in, in the, this day and age, you need to really, really analyze the, the result of that. You know, it costs you a lot of money to, to, to unless you have get it for free. If you get it for free, then go for it. But if you don't, um, you need to configure and consider how much time and money you spend over there and what's the lead generation getting to your site. Do they actually stay and do actually buy? Do you attract the right people, right? And it's, it's just to create a brand awareness that there is a, a this available service because uh, uh, I know what uh, in, uh, I don't exactly go to Pasar Pramuka, but uh, sometimes when uh, I've had times when I was trying shopping around for a blood pressure a monitor and trying to figure out the two or three, the, the, the two to three million dollar one, the, the, and then all the way in one corner, I remember seeing five hundred thousand, really, <laughs> right? So, um, uh, but but the thing about that is what you need to consider. That um, consider the customer's experience. Uh, when do they decide that what I need is a blood pressure monitor at home? Right? Um, you should be able to get to them a lot earlier than that when they're looking for information on blood pressure. Right? And that's what the internet is all for. If you, if you uh, don't focus too much on the first thing that you have is a whole bunch of tokopedia uh, uh, for help, as opposed to maybe more informa information based or work together with some uh, website that does uh, the information side so that you can get uh, people who are interested in, uh, in those kind of products and, and SEO your, your stuff to be more visible. Because uh, um, it's very cost effective to do it online. It's not so cost effective to do, to do offline. Um, Zalora took a while until they finally opened the store, right? It's just to reach the next uh, million customer, I guess. But there's still a lot of the first million that they can grab online. How to do a quick uh, product research on what best to put on our website. So I think this must be uh, on your uh, merchandise account. To decide uh, what are the good items, uh, what are the fast moving items that you must uh, stock up. If you don't stock up the fast moving items, then you lose your revenues and you lose your uh, sales. If you stock up the slow moving items, then that's a loss for you. You will never sell and you will have to discount and go on a negative margin. Um, so I believe it's on the merchandising team to decide uh, what are the items that you need to stock up. And also, if you want to do a quick research of the keywords, uh, 
course, like the online tools are available to do the Google Analytics and see about, check what are the uh, things that people research on Google. For example, what are the healthcare um, machines that people really research? Is it the blood pressure check or is it the diabetes check? Uh, is it the pregnancy check? What are the uh, items that people search? And I'm sure that's the uh, key to your business, to get people to search and then come to your website and buy. I think that's the most effective one. Yes, that's the strongest one. Uh, if not, maybe use the forums if there are forums. Uh, but still, the Google Analytics is the best uh, way to search. Um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Even if you end up selling in a forum, you you know what the interest level is from Google because Google has a lot more powerful reporting than anybody else. And the same thing that they're, if they're looking at for it in the form, they will look at it for Google and it will show up over there as well. Uh, number two, uh, especially if you have to worry about what product to put up and not put up, um, my suggestion from a VC point of view, uh, capital is very expensive. Um, don't stop, ever. Um, uh, if possible, your biggest edge compared to anybody else in the market is you are online. You can do things faster. Now, your your net, your uh, weakness is you don't have the money. Um, uh, and I don't know how much experience you have. You're asking, that means you, you, you're still looking for the best product, right? So the best idea is uh, sacrifice your margin, go partner with people who own the product, and until you figure out which product you need to focus on and, uh, in carry an inventory and negotiate a good payment term so that you can, and cash flow wise, you don't actually have to hold on to the product or to pay for the product. Um, just sacrifice your margin. Your, your target for, uh, especially if you're a tech startup, is to grow. And you grow by uh, making the best possible use of your money right now. And that should be on getting your website better and uh, marketing it, not in inventory. In fact, that's one of the uh, First thing that would disqualify our investment is the moment we see uh, inventory in your cash flow, uh, inventory carrying cost in our cash flow. God knows, I mean, I, 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 I can tell you personally why that is. Uh, my gaming company um, uh, grows 300% per year. Uh, we have one and a half month of inventory carrying cost. You know what it does, actually? No matter how profitable we are, Every year we need money because the cost of uh, the, the amount of money we need the, uh, to operate grows 300, three, three times every year. Now, because of what we sell every month grows three times every year. That's really, really something. You don't want it to be that. If you can sacrifice margin by working together with somebody next door, if you need to relocate yourself to, uh, to Pasar Pramuka, yeah, so that you can then. Um, sh uh, ship from your near your your warehouse by walking over to next door the guy down the road who actually have the product, right? So uh, actually, what we do know is uh, we have an agreement with the sole agent. Yeah. Um, we have a special discount and everything, but the problem is uh, when we ask them to deliver, they they always late to deliver to us. That's the basic idea why we have to keep your product with us. Uh, first uh, option is that we are using consignment method, consignment. Uh, the second thing is their product, but maybe not all the product. Can okay. someone do that? Just now you mentioned that you are a pharmacist. Am I correct? I just invited your friends from the pharmacy group here. Actually, why don't you use that to your advantage? Instead of targeting the customers, the hospitals, clinics, and all of these things, why don't you just target the pharmacy, for example? So everybody who wants to open a pharmacy, they know, hey, go to your website, get everything that you need to open a pharmacy from the website. Get a very specific product, very targeted, use your connection, and you use the experience as well. Then you can sell easier. I think you're not you're, uh, putting your, uh, spreading yourself too thin with a lot of things going on at the same time, from A to Z, so it might be also confusing to the customer as well. So use your connection, use your experience to make yourself, uh, you know, be uh, different. 
that's, that's what I'm asking. I mean, it should be like um, a small, uh, could you leave for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because why? Yeah. On, on that note, there's one thing that you may want to consider uh, as a great sage. Um, um, uh, remember that uh, as big as we are in e-commerce and online, the B2C e-commerce consists of maybe like 1% or maybe you are lucky 2% of the entire uh, commerce of Indonesia. Just practically on every product, maybe except airline. And in airline, wow, it's a whole 10 to 15 percent, right? but you know that means the other 9, 85 percent is still offline. So if you can be the uh, uh, next source provider for uh, your apotheque friends or getting products that they cannot find in their store, but somebody's asking for, yeah, um, like uh, uh, there's one company uh, 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 that that I can I don't want to name names. Uh, but uh, basically is uh, the second uh, peer supplier for every um, uh, computer hardware store in Jakarta, right? Um, and everybody just, when they don't have it in stock, they'll order from them. So when, they, when you get into that level of, uh, of uh, 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 the provider, and you, uh, the good news, news about uh, being internet is you can carry a whole lot of data you don't even have to carry the product, right? And you, you uh, when they need uh, this specific uh, kind of blood pressure uh, monitor, they will. They don't. Have, they don't have it in stock. They'll call you. They order for the customer for you. That would get you to the eighty-five percent of the uh, customer, and the ninety, maybe in, in America, maybe ninety-nine percent, who never even think about doing this online, right? Well, in one, in one type of product, or we can say that everything. Everything. That means you have to stop. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't stop them. You just know where to get it, right? You're the information source that everybody in uh, in Jakarta, in, in Indonesia go to when they want. Uh, you, because you have, you have the entire, the idea is to, to, to be considered as having the entire Indonesia's inventory, to play the information game. You're the information broker. If somebody says, I want XYZ, Omron version, so and so, a blood pressure monitor, yeah. They don't have it next to, to them. They don't have it in their, their store. They know you would have. You you know where to find it. Yes. That's all. In the long term, is that good uh, company? I mean, I mean, if one day we, we want to make, we want we want to have our own product. I mean, like be the sole agent one day maybe. So is that a no problem? Uh, because is that you're, short you're the, term? No, no, no. Long term. Because you're the interface. Okay. You you're the one they order. You know because the the apple your apple friend or customer, a yeah, reseller, does not care where you get it from. One day you decided that you know everybody's buying this thing, you know, you just go direct. But now by the time you go direct, you have a hundred order a month, right? Any uh, supplier would, would kiss your feet, especially if you then can change. Don't, don't buy Omron, buy uh, XYZ product instead. Yeah, it's the same, right? Your your uh, uh, reseller would just okay it, you know. That's that's uh, that's the power of uh, of the business. This is not necessarily online, but you know, with online, you just make it so much easier to service hundreds of thousands of apotheque throughout Indonesia uh, for uh, for resupplying them them with goods they can sell. Yeah. Last question: Do we need do you still newsletter or something like that? Do our customer will read the newsletter or something we send to them online? Of course. Uh, do everything you can uh, to get to your customers. Uh, for the newsletters, the interesting thing I want to share is in Indonesia, probably it's the one of the country that people read the most newsletters. In Korea um, or Japan, uh, people ignore you if you send too many newsletters. Uh, they spam you, they block you, they sign up uh, from your website. But Indonesia, you need to constantly uh, give them a reminder um, three times a day. <laughs> three times a day? Five times a day if you have a resource to do it. Uh, Can we do it on Facebook? Is that uh, we'll, we'll give them anyway? Or so we'll actually, have... there's a two teams for it, right? One team for the Facebook, one team for the newsletter. <laughs> depends on how much uh, resource you can use. Yeah, it really depends on your company. Actually, personally, I also don't like newsletters. So <laughs> <laughs> I never do that. 
Right, right. I like Sukumar right. Pugh's letter because he says some every every uh, week or so, one out of the five emails as uh, email is sent, he says discount on something I want. Right. <laughs> and for that sake, I'll keep the other four. <laughs> and I'm not subscribing. Exactly. The newsletter works in Indonesia. Um, yeah. It's a good news, uh, but also you need to have a good team to constantly make the designs, make the contents, and make the promos. Um, for the B2B team, uh, instead of the newsletter, what works better is again the direct mail. Uh, give them a flyer, give, send them the actual mail package to their companies. Uh, that's the tip from my side. Okay. Last one, maybe uh, anything you want to suggest to us? One of uh, each of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think overall, I think we still need to uh, ask you the question of exactly what kind of product line you're going to carry and what is the pain point that you want to solve from the customers. Is it, is our customers having a painful experience really searching for the medical devices? Uh, if yes, then what are the devices? I think go from the uh, general questions down to the details because it seems like we still don't know uh, where to start uh, from this conversation. And also, um, yeah, talking about B2C and the B2B, uh, it still seems like we're uh, having a uh, conversation about whether you want to target the mass market or the uh, niche sector, which is the B2B. Because that's a very different uh, operation you need, very different uh, team skills that you need to target uh, both industries. So I advise you to uh, think of which road you want to take and uh, yeah, plan out from there. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Ellen. Uh, Ellen. Yes, uh, just focus, as I said before just now. You know, don't go crazy like doing every single thing that you want. I know you want to be the Amazon of uh, medical equipment, but for a start, I think you know, Amazon was a start with just books in the beginning, remember? So just focus on one thing first, do it really, really well, and once you feel comfortable, you know the market and you have the data, expand to like, you know, go to hospitals or other parts of the medical industry. You want to say that we're going to focus on one type of customer first? Yes, just when you have the graph, right? The, what's it called? The hospitals, the clinics, the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. I would suggest pharmacy because you have that background and you have the friends here to help you with that too. Um, I, I agree with uh, Grace and Ellie. Um, and uh, I agree specifically on the uh, focus on, if uh, focusing on B2B, if you can, that will give you the most reward bank for bank effort to resolve. And what you, you need to do is, um, in a lot of uh, e-commerce game, it's about margin. You cannot get margin until you get volume. B2B will get you the volume much faster than any other method at the lowest possible cost. Yeah. So, um, because an individual uh, customer, lifetime value is much, much higher on the B2B side than on the B2C side. B2C is sexier, B2C is easier to defend in the long run because of brand. But in the beginning, for you to get into the momentum, for you to be able to have supreme negotiation power to your supplier, you use B2B. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. So, my name is Adiyat Bagunawan. I was a doctor actually. By that, it means that I am no longer a doctor. I'm going to be a husband. So, so this is especially specific to not me. My father, do you agree? No, no, he's more handsome. So the doctor is actually number one before. Right now we are top two, I guess. Digital healthcare platform. 
So many people say that we are media, we are portals of healthcare, but I don't like it. I love the DERPS platform. So it, it was founded in 2011 and was to be designed as an integrated digital health platform, but right now we are still in the phase one, I guess. So there are still many homeworks that we are planning to do in upcoming years. And bear with us that we are going there. So since it's already 7 p.m., I guess, and we still have to land up there, so let me make it quick. Um, so this is the, the capture of what happens in Indonesia right now, especially when BPJS is already being implemented. There are so many queue lines in every hospital. I don't know what happens in your hospital. But this one guy here, can I use the pointer? Yeah, there's a old man here. Oh shit, my queue line is number. What the fuck? And then he said, Oh shoot, I should just stay at home and doing my consultation at meetdoctor.com. Sorry, a little bit promotion. And here, I'm sorry Ali, only Indonesian can understand this joke. <laughs> is it kadang saya merasa sedih. So this is what happened and this is actually what we are planning to do and the reason why we decided to move to online work. So our service is actually about online consultations and I do not share my statistics here, but let me tell you that we have 8 million plus page views per month right now. We have more than 40,000 members registered. We have 2.5 million active users every month. And we have so many other million statistics that I don't want to share. But we are doing pretty well and really hope to have some advices from the uh, prestigious panelists here. Nice to know all of you. I don't know, I met them already. So let me share you a little bit about healthcare facts. And I think I'm here not to share about the achievement that we do the doctor have done so far, but rather than thanks to whoever built this event that I agree with Ray. And I have never been invited or I have never been into any startup talks like this talking about healthcare. And I think you should be thankful to whoever built this event that healthcare is a unique thing. And let me share you the healthcare facts in Indonesia and maybe if some guy and some young guys sitting out there you want to build some new startups, maybe you should build one. Why? You can see here this, all this number here is not bullshit. 60 billion US dollars in the next three years. This is from Frost Sullivan. So the middle class economy in Indonesia is growing so fast, and you can see it in the BPJS. And this is, I, I, I typed this last month, 72 million people in Indonesia on Facebook. Maybe it's already 80 million, I don't know. <coughs> and I cannot tell you the name of the pharma company, but I met them personally. That they say that they spent 500 US dollars for patient education for only one specific disease along four years. And when we are talking about health insurance, actually the penetration is really low, still 4%. While the market is so big, and that will only mean one thing we have a really big opportunity, right? So, Mid Doctor is only doing this pie so far. It's still small, very small. So, that's why it's really good to be here to meet all of those players in the healthcare area. Danny from Medicology, Jonathan is my old friend doing Apotek Anta, and so I, and, and also the panelists. And so, I think this is a really good forum to share with others. And I have a couple of questions already sent to email as well. So as I promised you, because there is still one um, handsome guy out there doing the presentation, so I'll be quick. <laughs> Alright, so Midoc is already getting investment. And to whoever out there who wants to invest in Midoc, you can contact me. <laughs> By the way, my point is getting investment is not as easy because it's like getting married, so be careful in 
choosing your partner. Getting married again? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, or, or getting married again. But I, I don't follow that. <laughs> so this is some um, some healthcare problems that I think the biggest problem of the mindset of the people right now in Indonesia is the biggest problem because they tend to see the doctor, they have to see the doctor, they have to be touched by the doctors. But most of the cases, if you know that you have a really high glucose level, you don't need to come to the doctor actually. You can just call him and tell him what is your blood glucose level and he will give you some recommendations. And I can say that because I was a doctor and I did that, I am no longer doing that. So tonight, the consultation time is closed. If you want to ask me some questions about healthcare, go to meetdoctor.com. They still serve until 9 p.m. <laughs> so, there's limited time when patients even have a conversation with the doctors. We have studied for six years for so many billion fucking rupiah. I'm so sorry. For six years. And there are some colleagues of mine there who still, who still want to pursue their specialist, right? And another six years. So it doesn't does it surprise us when you come to a doctor and you are only being served for five minutes? Five minutes. And you pay for, like, how much? Thirty dollars. For five minutes? You can go to meetdoctor.com for free and not get promotion. <laughs> so, my thing, my point of view, and I, 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 I need some feedback from all three of you. But I believe in the future, we in Indonesia, especially we all, the healthcare payers, we should move the atmosphere and the ecosystem from doctor center to a more patient center. And that's what we are doing right now. So again, I think I shared this with Donald before, that we in healthcare are a very pathetic people, I should say. What is the difference between the beauty of healthcare with all the security and high level information compared to banking. I think the analogy should be a little bit similar. But banking has done so many and so much of funds in the tech area, while we in healthcare still do nothing. So with this, I think this is my last slides. I challenge all of us, let's have a discussion, I think for only 10 minutes, so that Jonathan can share his slides as well. In any case, you want to contact me, I do not share my phone numbers, but I share my emails. So in case you want to talk to me, talk to me right now, or through my Twitter. Thank you so much.